What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about things you should not do in Canada. Uh, and more specifically, looking at this discussion here on Reddit, in this, uh, this discussion called Ask a Canadian, where people just ask Canadians questions, random questions, what are some less obvious don'ts in Canada, I absolutely loved this question. This sounds fascinating. I like the less obvious don'ts, where it sounds like you genuinely need to be a Canadian to answer this question. Like, any culture, if they were going to answer this question, would have to have lived there and experienced these things. I don't know what these things are going to be. Like, social taboos, or, like, tips about how to, like, not insult and offend people in Canada or just how to get along or accomplish things there. I don't know. There's a lot of different directions this could take, but uh, I thought this discussion was worth taking a look at. It could be very educational for me. So uh, the uh, original poster says I'm from the Netherlands and I was wondering if there are some things you shouldn't do in Canada Apart from the relatively obvious ones you shouldn't do in any, any, any country. Thing, yeah, the ones you shouldn't do in any country. You should not go to uh, chopping people's heads off. Basically anywhere in the world. That's generally frowned upon, for sure. But, uh, okay, let's get to the answers, right? Uh, someone from Ontario. Don't underestimate the wildlife. Deer can attack with deadly results. And raccoons have sharp teeth claws and opposable thumbs or i guess not because they crossed it out <laughs> i this really is one of the things that scares me about canada there's not too many things the people seem extraordinarily friendly the economy's great lots of great stuff in canada and then i read stuff like this where it's like oh by the way deer will attack you with deadly results and raccoons will jump on your face with and they have sharp claws but uh yeah it's all cool other than that I, this is a this is the number one voted response, by the way. Think of them as 10 to 20 kilogram bears that can grab your face. We have we have raccoons in America. Most people think they're cute, uh, but then again, most people don't have uh, experience with them jumping on you, and they just hang out in the trash cans. They do like bump over your trash, and they're seen as annoying, but certainly not a danger. What's going on in Canada? What are you feeding those things? Don't underestimate the weather. Here in southern Ontario, winter can be negative 30 with wind chill. I don't think I've experienced anything close to negative 30 Celsius, I imagine. Uh, I've never experienced anything close to that temperature in my life. So I don't quite know what would happen. I don't know what my body would do, but I don't know if I want to know. And the summer temperatures can reach plus 30 or more. Wow. It's a good idea to dress in layers no matter the season. Right, right. I've heard this tip before. The layers thing. Because then you can, like, control your temperature by taking stuff off, putting it back on. Seems obvious, but it's actually pretty good advice for Americans. Um, temperature swings of around 30 degrees aren't uncommon within 24 hours. 30 degree temperature swings. In a day. That's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Don't don't underestimate the geese? Why do I keep hearing this? Why? <laughs> what is with this? Why? <laughs> in so many videos, and now again in this discussion, are people are like, what's going on with the geese? Is this serious? I keep reading this. Don't... Un okay. All right. I won't underestimate them. No problem. Okay. <laughs> Scary. Uh, okay, this is by someone from British Columbia. Don't say nothing when you enter someone's personal space. Don't say nothing. Isn't that, it sounds like something a Southern American would say. Don't say nothing about, do not say nothing to me. No, or are they really trying to do a double negative? So you should say something? Say, say something when you enter someone's personal space. Okay, it's hard to write in don't form. It's more of a do. Okay, so say something when you are in someone's personal space. That's good. That's good advice. Polite. This is where our famous sorry comes from. 
you're not apologizing, you're just acknowledging someone else's existence and voicing consideration in their general direction. I love this one. I love it because it's so not American behavior. But, uh, you know, there's a small select group of Americans who do sincerely appreciate common decency like this. But when people bump, if I got bumped into or someone like was uh, in my personal space, whatever, grocery store, crowded area, like uh, trying to get by me, I would never expect someone to say sorry, ever. And if they did, I'd be like, whoa, no problem. No problem. Thank you, by the way. Not a problem. Enter my personal space, by the way. Like, if you're going to be that nice. No problem. It doesn't matter who bumps into whom. You both say sorry and go on your way. Oh, this is good stuff. <laughs> this, this is the level of detail I need. The, <laughs> the, uh, the ritual of the sorry and how to do it. Okay. If you, have, if you have to scooch past someone or drop something near someone, sorry. You can take the lead from the other person, but basically, if someone says sorry to you, the polite response is to smile and say sorry back. Sorry. No, <laughs> no worries is also polite, but sorry is more quintessentially Canadian. Wow. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah. I mean... Uh, sometimes I exaggerate a bit. In America, it would not, it's not completely unheard of for someone to say sorry or not a problem. No worries. That happens. But I see this far more commonly when I read and watch stuff about Canadian behavior, Canadian culture, interactions like this. So uh, what limited uh, analysis I can uh, say that I have experienced on this matter it does sound like quintessentially Canadian, as they put it. Um, oh no, I'm going to have so much trouble with this one. Not because I don't want to, but I'm the absolute worst at social situations and reading people's body language and stuff. Well, that's the good thing, because uh, in Canada, it just sounds like there's no decision-making necessary. Everyone just knows what to do. Just, like, say sorry. They'll say sorry. Continue about your day. It's all good. I like that. Um, and every, you know, it's just like makes everyone happy. Politeness goes a long way. Uh, take off your shoes when you walk in someone's house. Yes. Not sure if it's common culture in Europe. Oh, that's because the original person was from the Netherlands. This is common culture in America. But I was absolutely aghast. Shocked. Uh, the more I grew up. When I would find people, the more houses I walked into in life, there are people in America who don't take their shoes off in their house. And uh, just kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow. So very happy to hear that Canadians on, are on board with the shoes off in the house. Um, I apologize if any uh, dirty-shoed Americans come along and start pounding around in your house with their shoes. Apologies for that. Could happen. Um, don't leave your shoes on when you enter a house. Yeah. Uh, I always take off my, my shoes off. Can't tell if it's common here. Apparently it is. Okay, good. I like that. I like the, I like these so far. These, uh, these don'ts of Canada. Things you should not do in Canada. I feel like this is like, I can get on board with this. Uh, all seems pretty reasonable. Um, another one. This is kind of obvious, but people still get surprised. Don't underestimate travel times. Canada is a big country. Also, when asked how far away something is, we tend to answer in time units. It's 10 hour drive. It's a two hour ferry ride. Ferry ride, huh? There should be more ferries in America. Wow, ferry ride, <laughs> sounds fun. Or a five hour flight. Okay, yeah, Canada is is Canada the second biggest country in the world? Canada is enormous. So this is good advice. Um, don't underestimate travel times. Yeah. Especially compared to like when you think about European countries. I was thinking about this. Like the UK or other places. They can literally drive like anywhere in their country. Like very quickly. In a few hours. Like, doesn't that blow your mind a bit to think that people live their whole lives in those kinds of places in countries that are small 
And you can just drive anywhere, like, any day, like, and it doesn't take more than, like, a few hours at most. That's pretty crazy, because in America and Canada, um, it, like, could take forever if you want to go to a certain place. Uh, so, anyway, it kind of relates to this. Um, a direct flight from Amsterdam to Toronto is about eight hours. A flight from Toronto to Vancouver is another five. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good advice, good advice. I like that. This person's from Quebec, Quebec. Politeness manners is taken decently serious by most Canadians. Oh, as another user mentioned, it's considered rude if you don't respond to thank you with no problem or you're welcome. Likewise, for holding the door open, if you see someone, if you see somebody or saying have a good night when leaving the lift, Okay, so, um, to this I would say, <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually, to me. Because Canadians are so polite and very concerned with, like, uh, other people, which is a big difference from, like, an Americans on average, I'd say. Especially Americans in, in big cities. They are not very concerned with, like, bothering other people, like, bumping into them, not apologizing. No, that's not a big concern for a lot of Americans. But it's funny how this almost makes it sound like politeness is so important to Canadians that you would actually come across as offending them if you didn't match, like, the social norm of politeness. Like, if someone said sorry or was being very kind to you and you did not say thank you or no problem or you're welcome, that would be rude. And I think that's... Like, perfectly reasonable, honestly. Um, so, this one, almost, some people, some Americans would be like, what, you're getting mad at me because I didn't say thank you? But it's like, yeah, like, people are being kind and respectful to each other. And so it's about being mutual, mutual respect. Uh, not treating you like the king or something. Uh, anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Um, not a big deal at the end of the day. But I like how there is an emphasis on mutual respect here. And it's like, it'd be rude if someone was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, excuse me. And you, and if you were just like, me, mm, me, mm, mm. <laughs> you know, just like not responding and making that exact face. Nothing of consequence will happen if you don't do this, but based on experience, they'll vent about, <laughs> they'll vent about you later, about how rude you were to, to their friends and co-workers. I can relate to that. Oh my, that's funny. <laughs> British Columbia. To add to that, when you check out somewhere, the cashier will almost always say something along the lines of, have a good day, or enjoy your weekend. While it's fine to ignore them, or just say thanks, you're best off responding, thanks, you as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like this. Just everyone, like, putting in that little extra effort to be kind to each other. Um, I don't know, they should do a study on this. Actually, they should, like, uh, re observe and record the average response of Americans to, like, uh, service um, people and waiters and cashiers and then see the average, like, uh, what the average response is and then test that on Canadians and see if, like, they really are more polite on average. I bet you they, they would be. Um... Okay. Oh, wow. That's really serious indeed. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, serious, but in a good way. I scrolled through a bit, and I haven't seen a note about acknowledging people on the street. Acknowledging people on the street. It's common that if, uh, if you catch someone's eye while passing in the street, you give a little yes nod or a smile. It's not strictly necessary etiquette, but don't be surprised if someone does that to you. Yeah, yeah, I, this is a tough one. I'm tr I always try to think like, what is the average American's reaction to this kind of thing? And I can only speak to like my personal experiences, but I, yeah, I would not expect like on a day-to-day -day basis, if I looked at someone and had eye contact, I would not expect them to do anything like give me a nod or or a smile. That would almost be interpreted as too much where like seriously, for Americans they'd be like, 
why is that guy smiling at me? But uh, maybe that's more common in Canada, just because like a common, like an elevated sense of like people being kind to each other. It's funny. You can really get in the weeds on this thing. I like this. I like how specific this discussion is, by the way. It's fascinating. Uh, com comparing uh, this part of Canadian culture with America. Very interesting. You know what Americans do sometimes? <laughs> this is, I've seen this on memes and like <laughs> as a joke. Um, when Americans catch each other's eye and make eye contact, a lot of people will go like this. They'll, they'll go like that. <laughs> Just like you, master of the, the nod that goes up and the half smile where you're like, <laughs> just like that. That a lot of Americans might do that to you. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, wait, wait. Let me go back to that. I thought I saw something. Oh yeah, here in Newfoundland, where you'll also get a how how are you getting on there, buddy? <laughs> how are you how are you getting on there, buddy? To which you reply, best kind, best kind. Huh? Interesting. Never heard that. Translation. How are you today? Very good, thank you. <laughs> it's literally Canadian English that needed a translation. <laughs> Funny. Um, in your big city, in a big city, people are often busy and want quiet time to themselves. Yeah, that's my experience, to be honest. Oh, here we go. This is an obvious don't do, but I thought I would share it anyway. I met a couple from Poland at a bar who were visiting family in the GTA. And they made a comment about Canada being overrun with immigrants. Needless to say, they were chewed out for the next 20 minutes until they left the bar. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the vast majority of Americans would be deeply uncomfortable with someone saying the exact same thing, honestly. That's just inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially, yeah, especially like he's saying, we are extremely, Canada is extremely proud of our diversity and our welcoming of immigrants. We were built on immigration and we like it like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, wow, wow. Yeah, that would be just inappropriate and mean. Um, some less obvious don'ts. We prob would probably be calling Canadians Americans. <laughs> calling Canadians Americans, the worst thing you can do. Uh, but no, I get it. I get it. Because we live in North America, right? I have heard that so many times and it always annoys me. Don't do that. We are Canadians. I get it. This is, I've thought about this and it, it's kind of weird to me when I think about it. Why did, I mean, yes, we're called the United States of America. So maybe that's where it comes from. But it's like, there's a South America, North America with tons of countries in it, like tons. And yet... The U.S. gets the title of America. And I was like, why is that? Where'd that come from? So yeah, it's synonymous with the United States of America. I'm um, uh, American. So yeah, don't be calling Canadians Americans. Yeah, it, it's no good. I totally get that one. Uh, <laughs> side note, I want to tack on that we also love the Netherlands as our country is... Okay, very, very nice. Um was in Glasgow and referred to as an American. When I corrected them, they said, same difference. <laughs> oh, jeez. I said, so you're English then. Point was taken. Right, right. They're making just sweeping generalizations about people and their culture and where they're from. And then they correct you and you're like, ah, same difference. You're Canadian, you're American. It's like, no, just like, be respectful. Come on. Um... Especially when the term American has a, like, accepted meaning that everyone kind of gets. Um, I'd second a lot of the comments about not understanding the cold or wild wildlife. Oh, great. This, the deathly cold and wildlife again. Please do not feed the wildlife. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, that's actually important for Americans. Because Americans are not used to interacting with animals in real life. Only at the zoo. So a lot of Americans might think they can feed it and that that would be funny. Yeah, the number of times I've seen tourists feeding bear... The number of times I've seen tourists feeding bears? What? 
Really? Eva, I, I feel like most people would know better than to try to feed a bear. Maybe they're trying to make like an insta, like the a viral Instagram post or something. Along the side of the road is staggering. That puts everyone at risk. All because people want to stage a fun photo. Oh, yeah, that is actually what it was, huh? That bear is at potential risk of being shot and is very unsafe for the people that gather around. So you're you're kind of teaching the bear that it can get food from humans, which you do not want to do. I totally get that. Totally. Yeah, I could. But I, at the same time, I can totally see Americans doing that in Canada because we don't have bears and really wildlife roaming around when there is a single deer. A single deer pops up. Everything stops. Everyone stops and looks over like, it's a deer. And everyone's just like staring at it like, oh my gosh, the beauty of nature. And it takes like 20 minutes for everyone to calm down from the deer. Because we're so, there's just not that much like wildlife roaming around. Also, the water in rivers is no joke. In my part of Canada, there are lots of places to wade into different rivers. And each the year, there are people who need rescuing, who sadly get hurt or die. Mmm, it's good advice. Don't go wandering into raging rivers. Uh, you'd think people would know better, but things happen. Um, it's hard to define the politeness thing, <laughs> right? There's been a lot of comments on the politeness thing. It's like a science. Don't overthink it. I have a theory that day-to-day -day politeness is just about acknowledging the other person. Right, right, but that's the part Americans aren't good at. They often don't acknowledge the other person, Americans are a bit more self-centered, or just, it's not that they're being selfish on purpose, it's just that in general we're not, like, taught as a culture to care enough about other people's situation, their point of view, their feelings, so that's where more it more comes from, not out of a active intent of maliciousness, if that makes sense. If you accidentally bump into someone, you both say sorry, right? right? <laughs> Write that down. We need no need for conversation, just sorry, and continue on your way. You're both just acknowledging it happened and was an accident. Accidental eye contact with a random person on the street? Smile or nod. Say evening. Casual good evening is an acknowledgement. That's, yeah, that's just not happening for a lot of Americans. And if someone made a millisecond of eye contact with me even um and they were like then started smiling and saying oh how's it going i would take it like well i'd be like that's that's really nice of them but just the way i grew up in the american culture part of me would be like that's kind of strange that they felt like they needed to say something acknowledge each other but uh it's certainly not a bad thing Sounds, just sounds more common in Canada. That's an interesting little thing. If a driver stops for you at a crosswalk and waves you across, lets you pull into the lane in front of them, a, a quick half wave, like this, hmm, gives acknowledgement. Yeah, that's pretty common in America. Funny enough, that one's actually, <laughs> that one's actually common. Okay. Cashiers, say thanks. Servers bring you stuff, say thanks. Yeah. Clear, oh yeah. This is all very reasonable stuff. I think Americans are at least decently, a lot of Americans, I gotta give them credit, are at least decently kind to people in the service industry. So, that's good. Uh, this, this person is from British Columbia. Obvious one, I guess. But don't refer to our indigenous population as Indians. Okay, I mean that's something that's changing in uh, America as well. Everyone used to call Native Americans Indians, and that has completely changed. The term Indian is, like, thrown out. You do not say that. Um, indigenous population? Not used as much, but I have heard this used in reference to Canada. Um, this is a good as a general way of thinking, but go with whatever they ask to be called. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Some prefer the term Indian. Yeah, yeah. Just whatever they want, pretty much. Um, okay, Inuit is the right term, right? 
Yeah, I've heard Inuit as well. Yeah, kind of tricky, but in general, just if you can, if they, if, if it's known what they want to be called, call them that. Um, someone from Ontario says, don't drink in public places. We have pretty strict laws on where alcohol can be consumed. I don't actually know the laws in America, especially since every state in America has different laws about a lot of stuff. It's impossible to know all this. But uh, I know public drunkenness is illegal, like a lot in a lot of places. So yeah, in general, probably don't do this in Canada. <laughs> um, okay. Unless you're in Quebec, then just bring snacks and it's a picnic and it's suddenly legal. <laughs> Loophole. Funny. <laughs> uh, if you're driving and someone slows down to let you in traffic, give them a little, give them the little wave. It might not be as common in big cities. No, the little wave is like an American thing too. The little wave in your car. I don't know why we do this in our cars, but not in person. But we're very, we're more polite in our cars somehow. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you think about it. Don't equate French Canadian culture with France culture. Wow, this is a good one. I don't even understand this one. The difference between French Canadian culture and French culture. Or how the whole French Canadian culture started and how it's related to France. And I don't understand any of that, to be honest. I'm going to have to learn about that, actually, in more detail. That sounds fascinating. But they're different, This, uh, from what I can tell. The sayings, expressions, and swear words swear words, have evolved separately over centuries. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Quebec is a lot more rough and outdoorsy. They are more like Northmen than the French. They're like Vikings. They're more like Northmen than the French. Huh, that's so interesting. That is so interesting. French Canadian and France. Wow, that's, that's really interesting to think about. Um, more about indigenous people. Don't underestimate, don't underestimate the weather. We don't have enough access to public toilets. Really? Do you have those little portable toilets that are like very small? And I'm sure you do. <laughs> I don't have to talk about the portable toilets too much. <laughs> uh, not a brag. Canada is massive. Don't underestimate the distances. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, these have been pretty darn good, to be honest. Um, more about the cold. I'm just going through these to see if there's anything new. Do not litter. Carry your trash with you until you find a garbage can. If this is really, like, big in Canada, that is fantastic. I know it's big in a lot of countries where there's a huge, like, don't litter. We have a mutual respect for everyone in the cities uh, and wherever you're living that we don't just drop trash everywhere. America has a bit of a problem with this, truly. People aren't gonna like, they don't wanna carry their trash around. I've seen people throw stuff out their car window, onto the road, trash, cigarettes everywhere, depending on where you live. Yeah, I, I really admire this. A cult cultures who have a big emphasis on not littering. Cause especially certain cities in America, like there's literally trash everywhere. Like that's not an exaggeration. So, yeah, I agree with that. Never refer to us as just Americans. That's the people to our South, not us. <laughs> uh, former Prime Minister of Canada, Paul Martin, once said, A big part of being Canadian is that you're not an American. Gosh, man. Oh man. No, I totally get it. <laughs> uh, don't, uh, from someone from Montreal, Quebec. Don't be surprised by Canadian humor. We use a lot of sarcasm and irony. Love it. I love it. We have our own special way of making mockery of everything and everyone. We get along pretty well with the Brits on that. But we're not as depressing. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I love a good sense of humor. I like sarcasm, irony. Uh, yeah, I love that. That is great. Um, okay. Okay. Don't invade. Canadians have a bigger bubble of personal space. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Okay. This has been good. I, I think I, like, I, there's been a couple that are repeating now. 
But there's a lot here that were like really, really cool, really specific. I love that this topic was about less obvious, not obvious stuff that you just don't do it in Canada. Uh, truly like very unique personal stuff about like Canadian culture. Fascinating, fascinating. With a lot of parallels and comparisons to America that I was getting. So I loved this. This was fascinating. Really good discussion. I like that it was, uh, since Reddit is like a forum for lots of people to chat and comment, it was like from a lot of different people too, all over Canada. So that was great. I like this. Anyway, if you liked this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, uh, stuff in Canada that I've never seen or heard or learned before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.